And meanwhile, supporters of the People's Democratic Party across the 17 local government areas of Plateau State on Saturday turned out in large numbers to welcome the governor, Caleb Mutfuang, back to the state after his victory at the Supreme Court last Friday. It was quite an unusual crowd of supporters at the Yakubu Gawan Airport as many gathered to see the arrival of the governor and celebrate his victory. Well, the governor of Plateau State, Caleb Motfuang, joins me on the news at 7 now. Thanks so much for joining us, Your Excellency. It's been five days since the Supreme Court judgment. You've described it as a huge relief and a huge burden. And you've promised to not only carry that burden bestowed on you, but discharge it effectively. How has it been so far? Thank you, Abosede. Um, it's been five days of celebration. And um, we also have taken deliberate time to begin to reflect on governance. Um, we can't waste any time, but people are still celebrating. People are still rejoicing. And this Sunday, this weekend, generally, we would, would climax the celebrations. The Muslims will be thanking God in their mosques. The Christians will be thanking God at an interdenominational service on Sunday. But beyond that, we are trying to see how to steer back the ship of governance on the right track. And that's critical because that's what Plateau residents need. But in the meantime, let's talk about the PDP lawmakers who were actually sacked by the Court of Appeal. Is there any optimism that they will get back to their positions as legislators? Well, um, where there is a wrong, there is always a remedy. That is the principle of law. And we want to thank Nigerians for this consensus that injustice was done for those national and state assembly members on the plateau. We are discussing, we are exploring, uh, there is a lot of discussion going on in the legal community as to where do we find the remedy for this wrong. Because within the present framework of our jurisprudence, there is no ready-made re remedy. But we are looking at options. And I'm sure uh, when we eventually get to court, the court would also um, um, look at its inherent jurisdiction to do justice and I'm sure that we'll find a solution somewhere, somehow. All right. And, uh, well, you know, just before that uh, judgment was actually delivered at the Supreme Court last Friday, we saw you, you know, uh, shake hands very warmly with the governorship candidate of the APC, uh, Dr. Yil Wat. Many say that picture is actually pregnant. Oh, sure. Uh, well, you know, like I said in one of my interviews, for me, there is neither victor nor vanquished. We have a state to run, and we're going to run the state for everybody. I'm governor of the entire state, and everybody within the state is my responsibility. Therefore, we welcome every stakeholder on board, those who opposed us, those who supported us. Uh, we, there is no time for bitterness. There is no time for... Um, um, you know, sustaining division. We need to forge ahead together if we are going to bring good governance and the dividends of democracy to our people. And, you know, it does appear there's still some level of bitterness, you know, when you go to the local uh, level. And it's believed that that judgment of the Court of Appeal, which initially sacked you, actually, you know, created some kind of tension among communities. What are you doing as governor now that, you know, litigation are over? What are you doing to ensure that the existing tension uh, does not escalate at the local level? Yeah, well, division, I mean, uh, um, feel bad feelings as to how the whole thing went are bound to occur. This is natural. But this is where we must uh, put on our caps as leaders and ensure that we do not allow such feelings to be perpetuated. We must find a way to puncture these ill feelings so that we will be able to forgive one another and move on. 
Um, of course, when these kind of things happen, Elvin, talk 